We've already seen the new 2025 Mercedes AMG GT55 and the 63, the V8 versions of this new car. And now we have the baby version, the GT43, with a small little two liter four cylinder. But the design of this is substantially different from the big V8 brother. So I'm gonna show you the comparison between the GT63 and this new 43 and show you the differences from front side and rear and also of course the interior because now that Audi is changing their interiors with the Q6 which I believe is going to be the new standard for Audi I do think Mercedes is currently top of the line when it comes to German interiors is this design a more special design than the previous AMG GT I'm not so sure and there is a specific reason why and that has to do with the side view obviously we're gonna have a look at that as well so before we jump into Photoshop let's have a look at this new 2025 Mercedes AMG GT 43 featuring a 416 horsepower turbo 4 that feeds the rear wheels only so you don't have all-wheel drive in this and I think that's a good idea because you want to have all-wheel drive when you have the big more powerful V8 versions but in this with 416 horsepower Real wheel drive is the way to go in my opinion. The coupe will follow the AMG GT55 and the GT63 models which are slated to arrive later this spring. So you have a 2 liter 4 cylinder that makes 416 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque. And you also have a 48 volt hybrid system and I think that's a good idea. It does add some weight to the car which might be a concern for the handling. But I think Mercedes are able to figure that out. And this is the same Turbo 4 that you find in the AMG C43 sedan. And that did in the car and driver test. I'm gonna link this article down below if you wanna check it out in, in full. That's the, C, the C43, the 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds. However, Mercedes claims for some reason that this two door, sportier version, does it in four and a half seconds. I do think that is very conservative. It's probably due the same time as the C43, which is in the high three seconds. So both the GT55 and the GT63 models features Mercedes twin turbo V8, four liter V8, and they make 469 horsepower for the 55 and 577 for the GT63. The 63 is just a proper beast the spoiler has five positions the rear spoiler that you see is folded down right here it has five different positions above 50 miles per hour to either optimize handling stability or reduce drag now here you have this new interior for the amg gt and i do think this is a beautiful looking interior even though there are a couple of things obviously that uh, i would like to change here uh, specifically when it comes to the integration of buttons and so on we still have a few buttons at the bottom but overall this is top now when it gets <laughs> top of the line when it comes to german interiors because bmw is right now at the bottom with this very flat static screen that we have. Audi is very similar to that now with the Q6 interiors. Here we still have some sort of styling enclosement for the gauge cluster. I like to see that in, in, in cars like this. It's likely that the GT43 will start above 100k. With that said, let's jump into Photoshop here and let's have a look at this design. So as I said, there are some sub substantial differences between the uh, 63 as we have up top and the new GT43 so the tiny one four cylinder the big change obviously is going to happen under the hood you have double the cylinders in the GT63 and I think that in addition to the design would make me want to go for at least the 55 because I want to have the V8 in my GT but looking at the front ends here you can see that in the 63 up top we have a much larger intake in in the middle section of the grille we still have this uh, more frowning grille in mercedes these days but i do think it suits this uh, specific car this sports coupe to have it more of a frowning front face instead of a smiling grille that we had in the previous amg gt i also like that we have this separate intake following the same outline the same structure so we, it feels like we have two different types of grill inside of uh, the main grill and then we also have these side intakes or vents which are uh, functional to funnel some air in here and then maybe shoot out in the wheelhouse over there now looking at the GT43 
Some might say that it actually looks cleaner. It has cleaner surfacing compared to the 55 and the 63. And I kind of agree with that. But since this is a two-door front engine sports car, I want to have a little bit more aggressiveness in the styling, just like we have in the 63 up top. You can see that the grille is completely different. The outline of the grille here is a lot smaller than we have on the 63. It looks more like the previous generation AMG GT. And we also have a more traditional lower intake here at the bottom. We don't have these big fins or vents in the, in the front uh, corners. Instead, we have a pretty normal looking intake on the sides, which I don't think looks bad at all. I actually think it looks really good. And as I said, some might say that it actually looks cleaner than the 55 and the uh, 63. Headlights, of course, are going to be exactly the same. I love this line that goes above the headlight here, then cuts in and fades in this area right before the, it meets the corner of the grille. Beautiful little line there. And I also like the overall design of the headlights themselves with these three uh, sort of ellipse LEDs that we have inside of the unit itself. So a big difference in the front end. Very easy to spot if you're driving a V8 version or the four cylinder. The main thing you want to look for are these intakes on the side corner and also the design of the grill. If it has this opening at the bottom of the grill, it means that you do have a V8. Now looking at the side view here, there are also some changes to the side view. And these are bigger changes than I was expecting to see from the 63 compared to the 43. Just have a look at the side intake here, for example. We have a nice blade here going in the V8 versions, which has a clear connection to this lower line. Looks very nice and subtle as well as functional because this is obviously a functional air outlet right there. Very smooth design. There's not a single sharp line in the shoulder here. You can see that this greenhouse very smooth as well and has almost Porsche like proportions. I made a video on this uh, here on the channel comparing this to the Porsche 911 and which one I would personally buy. Now looking at the new 43 and look at this area, it became completely different in the 43 with a much smaller uh, side vent in the front fender. And this again looks a lot like the previous generation AMG uh, GT. Again, not a bad looking design, but still I do think I prefer this treatment because this has this beautiful connection to this line at the bottom. Now we have the same line, but it sort of fades into nothing here, which is also again a very clean design, but it doesn't look as interesting as this that we have on the uh, 63. The wheel design, as I've said so many times before, Mercedes is just crushing the wheels right now. They seem to be a huge fan of black wheels. And honestly, when it comes to Mercedes wheels, I don't mind the black wheels because I think they look so good on the overall proportions and designs of these cars. Both of these wheel designs look fantastic. And this is one of these wheels that when you see this spinning, it looks like it has this Frisbee inside of it. Because as you can see, we have this clear rim going on the inside of the wheel. Very cool and unique design for Mercedes when it comes to the wheels themselves. The overall proportions though, the reason why I think this is not as special as the previous AMG GT. Let's pop that in right here and let me show you. So look at the proportions here and the totally different style for the greenhouse. And specifically, I want you to pay attention to where the A pillar starts and stops on these cars. So if you drive the new AMG GT right here, you have your head right there. You sit almost right in the middle of the car, maybe a little bit further back, obviously, as you can see. But when you drive the old AMG GT, you sit basically in the last one third of the entire length of the car, which is insane. Just look at this long hood here, insanely long hood. And then we have the A pillar starting all the way back here, almost in the center of the entire car. Nuts, these proportions, but it looks really good. The greenhouse also a lot smaller. And the reason for this is that the new AMG GT, they, they wanted to make it a 100% A2 plus two seating. So you do have some rear seats here. Not sure how, com how comfortable it's gonna be to sit there as an adult, but you do have the seats back there and you don't really have that on the previous generation. But when it comes to the proportions, 
this is the reason why I think the old one is a lot more special than the new one, which looks very much like a Porsche 911 when you put them side by side. And here you can also see how similar this intake is to the previous generation AMG GT, even though I do think this is a lot more beautifully integrated because you can see we have this gorgeous chamfer going around it. So it feels like it has a, a home in the side of the car. Whereas in the new one, GT43, it just sits here. It doesn't have any sort of framing around it at all. It's just a hole in the side that doesn't necessarily feel like it's it belongs in the side of the new GT43. We also have flush door handles compared to the previous one. I'm not sure which one I prefer there either. But overall, you can see the big change in the propor proportions here. And that is what makes the old AMG GT a very, very special car. Now, looking at the rear end, I do think when it doesn't have the wing, the, the spoiler up top, like, this is an option for the new GT63, an option that I would definitely get for this car because I think it looks a lot better to have it on there than, than to not have it on the rear end. But again, some might say that the new GT43 still has a cleaner design because we don't have this side blades here either on the new uh, GT43. It's a lot cleaner, the surfacing. The uh, diffuser looks to be pretty similar to what we have on the GT63. However, in traditional Mercedes uh, fashion, the 43 gets around the tailpipes whereas the GT63 and I, I do believe the 55 as well gets these more squared off tailpipes and I'm not sure which one I prefer when it comes to the exhaust pipes I do I think I actually prefer the round ones because these have, have a more classic feel to them but overall the biggest changes here is obviously the wing up top this still has a spoiler in the back that, as we read in the article, folds up above 50 miles per hour. And it still has a very subtle and nice, elegant looking design, the new GT43. Now looking at the interiors here, and this is why I think Mercedes is absolutely crushing the competition, specifically BMW when it comes to the interiors. These are fantastic looking interiors. Up top we do have the 63 here and down low we do have the 43. Both of these look fantastic. I do prefer this uh, layout or stitching that we have, the diamond stitching that we have on the 63. It just looks a little bit more elegant than what we have in the uh, more basic design of the 43, but essentially they do look uh, the same. So let's focus on the 63 up top here and what I love about this interior. First of all, wheels, said this so many times before, but Mercedes are crushing every single... Whenever a Mercedes designer draws a circle, it somehow becomes a masterpiece. That goes for the exterior wheel design and also the interior wheel here. And also these settings for the drive modes look fantastic in the steering wheel. And look at the carbon fiber that we have here. Gloss carbon fiber, beautifully done. We do have, as I said, sort of a housing with these winglets going around the uh, gauge cluster. That is all I'm asking for. It doesn't need to be a covered house for it. Just make something to make it feel welcomed in the interior, this gauge cluster. I do think uh, Mercedes did a great job doing that with these beautiful winglets on both sides. In the middle here, we do have a big uh, infotainment screen. We do have a static portion of the screen that is always going to be dedicated to the climate control settings and I do like that it's also very big here so it's not that hard to see what it is you're adjusting with these two dials that you have on each side of the screen and thankfully uh, it is centered so let's draw a center line here and you can see how this is now absolutely centered in the middle thank you Mercedes for doing that change from the GLC that has a six degree angle to the passenger side which is extremely annoying this has the proper correct uh, layout for the infotainment screen in the middle beautifully done by Mercedes I don't know about you but I think Mercedes is absolutely crushing their interiors these days especially when you compare it to the new Q6 interiors of the Audis and also the BMW's extremely uninspiring interior so the new GT43 offers an opportunity to drive this beautiful masterpiece sculpture on wheels for those who don't feel like they need to spend a fortune on it just above a hundred thousand dollars still a lot of money obviously but if you're okay with having a four cylinder I do think the rear wheel drive is going to help this feel still like a proper sports car instead of having the all-wheel drive compared to the V8 models 